Fandom Fandom Chats. I'm Dee Dee. I'm Tandra. And this is Aunt Beth. And this is our special guest, Kathleen. And today we're going to be divvying from our usual segments for a little bit uh, to talk about cosplay. Now, you might have seen our video yesterday about the different types of cosplay you can do. If you haven't, you should go check out that video. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about making costumes from pretty much scratch. Now, the first one we were going to talk about today would probably be the Connor from Assassin's Creed costume that I made probably, what, three, four, four, years, four ago? years ago? About four years ago. Now, this was the first costume that I ever really tried to make, and I made it without a pattern because, as you can see, it's a kind of more of a unique shape, and it was really hard to find a pattern, especially an inexpensive pattern that would be suitable for this. So I don't even really know how to describe how I can do this, but I'm just good at <laughs> I can see a shape and usually I can just tell how I want to make it and it's not always the best technique to use. It's definitely better to use a pattern if you can get one. But for my first attempt at making a cosplay and to do it without a pattern, I am fairly happy with how this coat turned out. It's a little bit damaged now. I need to do a little bit more work on it and update it a little bit. But so it's... why don't you talk a little bit about the materials you used and how you you know what about like what what's a coat actually made out? What kind of material is that? It's just a regular cotton blend. I think I actually got this on sale at Joanne Fabrics. I saw it and said that's about the off color white that I want, and it felt about right. It was still, still going to be thin because we were going to a convention in the summer, and so I wanted it to be pretty light. And I'm pretty sure it's just a cotton blend. For the blue, it's a little bit more of a coarser fabric. I think it's a Muslim. And I wanted it to be a little bit coarser and a little bit stiffer because I wanted it to have a little bit more of a stiffness to it in those sections. And those are pretty much the only two materials that I use except for, of course, the buttons, which the buttons are actually ones that we had in uh, just from scraps. And so that was, again, inexpensive. The hood is made from just embroidery floss. Uh, you actually made this. Um, there was some cording that we used, and then we used embroidery floss around it mm -hmm. to give so it we the... We glued the cording on, and then you embroidered around it. Then we embroidered right, around it. to give it that raised look, and so it would show up better on pictures and whatnot. Right. right. Um, now, when we were talking on yesterday's episode about cheapness and things like that, um, that's another good thing. Uh, like you said, you got the buttons from ones we already had. Mm -hmm. We have a whole tin of buttons we picked up in a yard sale for like a dollar. You know, that kind of thing. And you never know when you're going to want to use them for something. Um, and then you used, when you were making some costumes, you, you were able to use some stuff like that as well that you were able to just kind of come up with. Now, your first costume that you made around the same time that she made this one, once again, we didn't have a pattern for it because it was for mm -hmm. Inuyasha. Yeah, it was Inuyasha. Um, you actually made it. I didn't make it. <laughs> well, I mean, um, you had to help. The, um, the first time, the first time you made right, it. Right, the first time. You re, um, re, redid it better this time. I, I didn't have a sewing machine. I cannot hand sew for crap. <laughs> uh, so you actually made it. We kind of found a pattern online for the pants, but I'm not so sure how well that worked out. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the ways we were able to, to get it is, since we didn't have a pattern, is we found a way it was supposed to look like in a pattern, and then we used poster board to actually mm -hmm. cut out the sizes of what we would need um, to kind of make a pattern, because I can't visualize like she does. Yeah, I have I to have something to either. start with. Now, last year, when I remade the pants, I did use a pattern. It was just like a pajama pant pattern that I added elastic to the mm -hmm. bottom, the ankle part to make it catch around the ankle like his is supposed to. And those turned out pretty well, especially since I sewed them myself with your help. Those turned out fairly yeah, well. Yeah, I thought they mm -hmm. looked really good. So that's that's the other thing. Let's, let's talk about patterns, because obviously a lot of people aren't going to be able to just freehand it. Like, <laughs> like wonder woman or like that. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Um, patterns are great. You can find patterns on almost any specific thing. Uh, this one here, which we don't have the tunic for right here, but we found a tunic. It, it was for a Jedi costume, and mm -hmm. you know we were able to make it. Um, you, you have Batgirl here. You have different stuff you can use for Poison Ivy. And Nowadays, you can find patterns for almost any character. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. patterns are generally expensive if you pay full price for them. But... 
I have gone to Joann's when they have been having sales. I've found, found McCall's patterns for $2. Mm -hmm. Places like Hobby Lobby sometimes have a 10 for 10 kind of deal. Right. Um, so I hardly ever pay full price for patterns. Right. A lot of times, uh, and that's a good time if they do have a sale like that, is to pick up patterns you might want for the future. A dollar a piece, you yeah. have them, they're get on, there. Get on email lists, text message lists, mailing lists, anything like that. They'll let you know about sales. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't, even if it's something that you're like, eh, I don't know if I'd want to use that. If it's a dollar or two, just buy it. Right. You never know when you might want Or you it. might have a friend who might need it. Yeah. Exactly. And I've bought stuff for Dee Dee before because she's obviously mm -hmm. a much smaller person than I am. <laughs> so I find patterns in both sizes and I just go ahead and mm -hmm. pick them up. Right. Now, that's the other thing, too, is you can modify patterns for your specific purpose. You can. We made a Star Trek uniform mm -hmm. out of just a regular shirt pattern. I think it was, it was a pajama, pajama pattern. It was a pajama pattern, but all you had to do was just have the top part be a different color, be mm -hmm. the, the black, and then have your, uh, I think he did the yellow. Yep. And you just modified the pattern. You just cut it mm -hmm. at the sizes you wanted. You've already got the pattern. Mm -hmm. and, it and it doesn't look exact. But it's no, really but close. But it's really close. And he got a lot of compliments mm -hmm. on that costume. Yeah, they thought it was an actual official, official licensed top. So there are a lot of patterns out there, sometimes just regular clothing patterns that you can modify. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to have the, the base pattern to start with. There are a lot of characters you're not going to be able to find a pattern for. Right especially if it's like this where you, it's like an actual pattern for that character mm -hmm. but you can go if you look through the books at Joann's or wherever and you look and you say that's close and mm -hmm. I can modify that mm -hmm. right that's the other thing too if you can't find the pattern in your exact size or if you need it to be a little bit larger or smaller for some reason that's relatively easy to do it is. and there are uh, probably places online will to tell you how to do it but mostly yep. If you just need an extra inch or two, just yeah, just get just the before size you cut it out. To you. you know, make your you know your marks or, or whatever you need to to show where you need to go. We had to do that on the Inyasha actually mm -hmm. because the pattern we had wasn't it needs to be more ballooned out in the pants. Mm -hmm. So we just made it a little larger that way to do that. So you can modify a lot of patterns too. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to sew, honestly, it's it takes a little bit of effort, but it's not that bad to learn how. You can you can take classes at Joann's if you don't know anything about sewing. Mm -hmm. You can look tutorials up online. That's honestly how I've learned a lot of what oh, I've yeah. learned. YouTube and Instructables. Everything and from Tumblr. threading sewing machines to... Yeah, I mean, YouTube different. is a fantastic resource for it cosplayers. Is. Now, was there some specific websites that are good for costuming? Um, I'm on Tumblr. I use Tumblr mostly for cosplay purposes to get tips and tricks and things that are good for this or that or to ask mm -hmm. people questions about something. Um, the few people I follow on Tumblr that I really like is um, Cos-Tips. This is run by two girls, one of whom is 16. <laughs> wow. She is a fantastic cosplayer. She has done... She's mostly a sewing cosplayer. She typically focuses on sewing. Mm -hmm. She recently did a Queen Amidala in the Red Royal wow. outfit, and it's amazing. She did Cinderella from the 2015 live-action movie, and that is absolutely gorgeous. So I follow those guys. Um, they answer questions. They're really nice. Mm -hmm. They typically get back to you within a day or two. So it's not like some of these more famous cosplayers where you have to wait a week or two. Or maybe, maybe not get your question answered at all. <laughs> um, there's also cosplay tips and tricks. I don't always ask them questions, but I watch what other people say. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's useful. Sometimes it's not. It just depends on what you're looking at. Cosplay Tutorial is also one on Tumblr, and Sky Cosplays, which is the 16-year-old. I actually mm -hmm. follow her specifically, mm -hmm. mostly just because I like what she does. <laughs> right. Uh, it's nice to see what it's she... It's nice to find people right. like that. Now, one of the things that you had found online when you were just happened to look was one thing is how to make a dress dummy, because mm -hmm. dress dummies... The real ones that you buy in the store are a couple hundred dollars or more a oh, piece. Oh, yeah, especially if you need a plus-size one like us. Right. So there is a really great way to make your own dress dummy that's relatively cheap. 
It is a bit time consuming and you'll need a friend to help you with it. It only takes a few hours. An hour or two. It's not too bad. Basically all you really need is an old shirt that you're willing to cut up, a lot of duct tape, and some kind of stuffing. I personally used a couple of old pillows that I used to stuff mine. Yeah, I actually went and bought like the cheap, pill. like two dollar pillows from Walmart. Mm -hmm. I bought like four of them for mine. Cause that's mm -hmm. actually cheaper than buying the fill like at a craft store. Yeah, yes. I looked yeah. at it. I looked yeah. at it. It was cheaper that way. So, as you can tell, we like to do things as cheaply as we can. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think I spent maybe thirty dollars on my dress form, which yeah. is a whole lot cheaper than buying one. And Plus, once you have it, it fits your specific body exactly. Um, however, you are made, and then you also use a Christmas tree stand and a just pole. an old pole that we had laying around. Well, to I, make stand I, up. I used a, like an extendable paint pole that I got mm -hmm. at Lowe's for like two dollars. Yeah, right. Um, so here's how you go about making it. Just kind of mention it. So you just put on the old shirt and you have your friend basically just cover you in two or three layers of duct tape and then you cut open the back, take it off, tape the back back up and then just stuff it and then cover all the arms and neck and bottom with more duct tape. And you put it on my Now the one thing you. I did instead of, she covered everything with duct tape at the holes, I used that spray expanding foam mm -hmm. that's meant for cracks in your home. It's called Great Stuff is the brand. Mm -hmm. um, I use that to fill up all the holes. That was just my personal preference. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of made things a little stiffer mm -hmm. and easier to work with in those areas. Plus, I'm obviously a bigger person, so it required a lot more duct tape for me and it was getting expensive at that point. Right. So, so yeah, it was cheaper to actually buy the foam at yeah. that point. Okay, and that is great. And what what's useful about having the dress dummy? Whether you use a pattern or... Well, she recently helped me do mine over the holidays. And since then, I've been working on a costume. And it's been helping me a lot. Because I don't really... I have a boyfriend at home, but he's not really into the cosplay mm -hmm. aspect of things other than just wearing them. He's not into making them. Right. So I'm pretty much on my own at home for doing anything. So it's been really helpful for me for drafting patterns. Yeah. Um, because I'm doing an armor build right now. So I have to do very specific patterns. So I've got my dress form there and I put my saran wrap or my uh, press and seal, mm -hmm. whichever I'm using, on my dress form, I can draw out my pattern, cut it out. I don't have to be like looking down at myself, mm -hmm. you know, wondering if you're actually going at the right <laughs> angle. Or yeah, not. so it makes that a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I like having a dress form because my a lot of my cosplays are a lot more sewing based, and I can put the the piece of whatever I'm working on on the dress form and see if it's falling right because I hate having to put stuff on and on as I'm sewing right. it especially with a lot of pins because you get poked a lot yep. <laughs> and sometimes you should actually put it on yourself to make sure everything's going well but it is a lot more convenient to be able to put it on a dress form and that way you can also inspect it you know all the way around and make sure everything's mm -hmm. going well so that's personally why I like, have, like having a dress form. Now one of the things that's important I think a lot with costumes, okay, we've been talking about the sewing and all that, but one important thing are your accessories or how you top it off mm -hmm. and all that. And we will talk the about the props and the other things in the next episode, but that is really important. The sewing's great for your base and everything, mm -hmm. but if you don't do that final finishing little touch, whatever you need, a, a weapon or a... A uh, piece of armor or uh, uh, something specific that that character has. Or Something very recognizable. For that right. character. Then it makes it hard for them to tell who you are. Right. It makes mm -hmm. them hard, you know. Um, yeah. And it's just that one little final piece that, that kind of brings the whole and thing And sometimes together. that one little piece ends up being the best thing about that costume. Right. Exactly. A lot of times it does. Okay. Well, I think that's probably pretty good for this um, episode. We will put some links down uh, for some of the websites that we talked about and mm -hmm. things like that. If you like us, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe and tell all your friends about us. And, and feel free to leave comments in the section below. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.